G'day folks, thanks for tuning in. Today's video we're going to explore true metallic metal, which is a technique in which we use paints with powdered additives to achieve a shiny or metallic look to our models. If you're coming from acrylic you might be familiar with this technique, but here we can harness the smooth blending properties of oil to great effect. Instead of the usual Space Marines, I wanted to give these Vindictors from Major Sigma a go, both for a bit of variety and because a heavily armoured look lends itself well to what we're trying to achieve. I'm leaving the shields off so you can better see what's going on, but I'll be using the same techniques to paint them off camera. We'll be using just one metallic paint, the silver from Gamblet, and using regular oil paints to tint it in order to create our different metals. In a previous video we explored making our own metallic paint out of special pigment powder, like these ones here, but I wanted to stick with the Gamblin today as not everyone will have the time or resources to make their own, and you can really get a lot out just this one tube. So let's get started. First I wanted to take a minute to take a closer look at the silver paint we'll be using. It's a Series 4, which does make it more expensive than many of the other paints that we use, but as a specialty paint this is to be expected. It contains aluminium powder to get that shiver, as well as alkyds, which will make it faster drying than a lot of oils. You can see as I open it that it's pretty chunky, so a little will go a long way. You do need to be careful when opening this one, as I find it's keen to get out, as you can tell by the rim. Now if you can't get this one there are a few other options out there such as interference paints or iridescence, like this iridescent pearl white from Williamsburg. This one contains mica and is brighter and a bit more sparkly, but I find it harder to work with as it's more prone to separation than the gambling. That said, it's still a perfectly viable alternative, and I sometimes use it for edge highlights for reasons that I'll go over shortly. When dealing with metallic paint, there are two things to keep in mind. The first is that the more paint we add to tint it, the less pronounced that metallic effect will be, especially if we're mixing in opaque colours. Because of this, we also can't increase the value of our metallic paint with white without severely compromising that effect. Now let's see that in action, so we can figure out how to best approach our metals. I recently put out a video about how you can use your minis to experiment with your paints and come up with swatches like these, which I'll link below, but we're going to keep it simple today and use this palette I put together from a piece of cardboard and some parchment paper, which is really all you need from an oil painting palette. I've got the silver out on the right, along with a range of colours that we're going to test it with to see how it behaves. I've also got a cap full of odorless paint thinner to help things along, as the alkyds in the silver make it pretty thick. I recommend using dedicated brushes for metallic paints, as the flakes are not only hard on them, but can easily get in where you don't want them if you're using the same brushes elsewhere. Like always, cheap synthetics will work fine. Straight out of the tube you can see how thick the silver is. Now let me add some white to it to demonstrate what I was saying a minute ago. Not only does it stay roughly the same value, but the opacity of that white dulls down and muddies the shine so we really can't use it like we normally would. Even if I were to try this radiant blue, which isn't as bright nor opaque as the white, we get something similar, albeit more of that shine still comes through. Now just a touch of Prussian blue goes a long way, but as dark and as blue as that is, you can still see the shine, and I can easily add more silver to bring it back in. If I were to instead add indigo, which is a desaturated dark blue, we get more of a cold steel look. So we can very easily modulate the type of metal we want in this way, and for our mini, I'm thinking a touch of blue for our reflected light with that indigo down in the shadows. So what about the gold? Well, if you're like me, you might think that it'd be a simple matter of mixing in some yellow. So let's try that. Now, this isn't showing up as strongly on camera, but what we get instead is a kind of green. A lot of yellows actually turn green when mixed with grey or black. And while old golds can definitely have a green tint to them, this is more than what I want, and it doesn't really give us much room. So what are our options? We could try adding some red to counter that green, but even just a bit of it is having a big impact, and it's just going to further muddy and desaturate things. That said, it doesn't look too far off our copper premix here, so it could be something to jot down for later. Colour theory tells us that purple is another complement to green, and is also the complement of yellow, so let's try that instead. Now this is interesting. It does give us more of a golden brown with some rich purple undertones, so even though the yellow we're using isn't giving us the gold we want, we could still incorporate purple for our shadows. So the more saturated the yellow, the more green we're going to get as we mix in the silver. So let's try Indian yellow and yellow ochre instead. Both of these paints are also highly transparent and shouldn't interfere as much with that metallic effect. We'll also try Asphaltum, which is a reddish dark brown, for our bronze. Now I'm liking these results a lot more. The Asphaltum gives us a nice starting point for bronze, with plenty of room to go darker. And the yellow ochre is close to gold, but could also make a nice brass. The Indian yellow is a richer gold, it stays vibrant as we add more silver into the mix. Now I realise I've just spent the last couple of minutes mixing paint, but quick experiments like this can really save you a lot of time when painting. 
and can reveal to you colours and combinations that you might not otherwise have thought of. So I reckon the plan will be to use Prussian blue and indigo as a foundation for our steel, asphalt them for our bronze, and Indian yellow for the gold. We'll start by applying a foundational layer, or pre-glaze, which will serve to stain the miniature and influence the subsequent layers that we apply. These have all been primed in a light grey acrylic primer, and we have on hand some thinner to help our paint stick as needed. As for brushes, we'll be using some cheap large rounds for this step, as we're shooting for coverage and not accuracy. The more beat up the better, as the splayed bristles will help our paint get into all the sculpted details. Out on the palette I have indigo and Prussian blue for our steel, Indian yellow and asphaltum, as well as some fanchion red and dark in purple. We want to use a bit of thinner to help the paint flow, but not so much that we're making a wash like I've done here. The thicker the paint the more effectively it'll stain, but this isn't a write off either. I'll just need to be a bit more careful and let it sit for longer. I'm also adding some indigo to the underside of the model, as those areas will be most in shadow. We can save our future selves some work by modulating our pre-glaze like this, as our subsequent layers will blend accordingly. And I'm also doing the blades on all three minis with the same blue. The other two minis will get a similar foundation layer of asphaltum and Indian yellow. You'll often see me use darker colours for this step, as they tend to stain better and I like to work my values from the bottom up, but here I'm looking to put down more of a mid-tone, as we lose that metallic effect the more paint we mix in, by starting in the middle we give ourselves equal room to go up and down in value. Now both of these are fairly transparent, particularly the Indian yellow, which will help us preserve that effect. We'll also apply some asphaltum to the base. We'll need to use more thinner here due to the amount of texture, but it's a quick and easy way to block in an earth tone. So we'll let these sit for 10 to 15 minutes to give the paint a chance to stain, before coming back to wipe that excess away. This part's real straightforward. We'll take something like a makeup sponge here and gently wipe away the excess paint, leaving a stain that'll influence any future paint that we lay down. The less paint we can leave behind the better, as we're not looking to build up texture, but some colours will stain more effectively than others, so have a play with it, remembering again that there's no right or wrong answer. Next we'll put down our silver, and see how our tests on the palette translate to our minis. So let's start again with our steel mini. Here we'll want a flat or filbert brush like this one, so that we can easily catch the various shapes in the model and cover a lot of ground quickly. We'll start with the straight silver, so you can see how much of an influence that foundational layer has. Not only is the blue mixing, but it's also blending, giving us some nice smooth transitions. We want gentle broad strokes here from top to bottom, as if we're guiding the light down onto our mini. If things get too dark too quickly, we can just come back in for more silver. We can also create a quick value scale of highlights by focusing in a smaller and more upward facing area each time we reload, and I reckon we already have a nice progression going from our bright blue steel down to those deeper indigo shadows. You can really see the difference the texture makes on the scale skirt compared to the chest plate, and in this way we can really make the sculpt do a lot of work for us. The process is much the same for the other two minis. Start from the top with pure silver, letting it mix on the mini as we move down. By using a mid-tone for our pre-glaze, the metallic shimmer persists all the way down. The drawback is our shadows aren't particularly dark, but we can come back in and reinforce those in a bit. Remember that the pure silver is as light as we can go with this palette, so locking our highlights in early will in turn show us how dark our shadows need to be. We'll apply the same technique to the blades and other metal parts. I've opted to make the skirt steel on all three, so you can see both the influence our pre-glaze has on that same indigo and silver combination, but also how it doesn't prevent us from changing things up midstream. And we can easily come back in and tidy up any overspill with our initial colours. Now if you wanted to get fancy with this, you could use that overspill to your advantage, as all this is highly reflective metal, and it would be taking on the colours of both the environment off screen and any additional elements. But I want to keep this demo simple. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a deeper dive on that in the future. Now if you've seen some of my other videos, you'll be familiar with the blending brush. This is a clean, dry, round brush that we can use to tap in or scumble our blends, making them smoother and getting rid of those unsightly brush strokes that could be more common with oils. We can use that same technique here too. We just cruise around the mini, gently tapping in those spots we want to be a little bit smoother, making sure to periodically wipe out our brush to avoid any buildup. If you've worked with metallic paint and acrylic, then you'll know how much of a challenge it can be to create smooth transitions. With oils, it's practically effortless. In fact, this technique works really well with metallics, as in addition to blending, we're also buffing, further enhancing that shine. So we've got our metals blocked in. Next, we're going to quickly address the non-metallic elements, as I find blocking those in gives us some good context for how the finished model might look, and act as a roadmap for our next steps. 
So full disclosure, it's actually about 24 hours later here, as I got pulled away while filming. However, I want you to see that the paint is still wet and workable, which is what you'd expect from oils. Now I did pop these in the freezer as I was concerned about the drying time of the alkids, but even if they had, it wouldn't be a big deal, and we could absolutely work wet over dry without much extra effort. Now I'm not going to spend too long on these parts as this video is about metallics. You can see that I added some titanium white to the palette to give us something to highlight our other elements with. Some white into asphalt that makes for an easy dirt highlight, which we can overbrush the texture to get a nice, quick and effective result. We can also use some indigo on the rocky elements to break things up, as the contrasting desaturated blues and oranges add some nice visual interest to an otherwise barren scene. Some purple and red makes a nice rich dark red, which I applied to the weapon grips and sword sheaths hanging from the belt. From here we can add some white, balancing it with a bit of Indian yellow if we feel things get too pink. We can make black for the undersuit by simply mixing blue and brown. This chromatic black is a lot more visually interesting than straight black pigment, and we can add some subtle contrast by leaning it a bit more towards brown for our steel and blue for our bronze and gold models, once again adding white to highlight. If you'd like to see more of this process, you can access extended real-time footage of this and many of my other videos over on my Patreon, where you can also get early access, vote for future content, and more. It's a great way to further support the channel, so I appreciate you checking it out. Now that these elements are complete, we can come back in with our metals and re-establish some shadows, before returning to pure silver for our final highlights. Here we're just going to focus on the lower parts of the model, and those most in shadow. We can take straight blue for this, and I'm just going around, gently blocking in a touch here and there, where I think the light would be the most obscured. I'm not looking to gob paint on here, just a touch, so we can come back in and blend it down. You can see what I'm talking about on the thigh guard, and again on the shin. We can use that same scumbling action from before to blend, working with the wet paint on the model. And we'll do the same with our bronze figure. Silver really brightened up that asphaltum, so by coming in with some pure asphaltum, we can get some fairly dramatic shading. For our gold, we need to introduce some dark, so it's time to bring some of that purple into the mix. This technique is the same across all three, and all that's different is the colours that we use, so I really encourage you to experiment and have fun doing so. Now the pauldrons on these guys are apparently blue, so we can thin down a bit of blue and easily apply it over the top. This will still mix, and the bronze and gold will be saturated and shifted towards turquoise and green respectively. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, and I find that sharing the pre-glaze like this can have a harmonious effect. That being said, if you really wanted to preserve your blue, you could use fewer strokes to minimise mixing, or just wait until it's dry and come back in over the top with fresh paint. So our shadows are looking pretty good, but there's still a lot of deep recesses on these guys, particularly in between the armour plates and rivets. So next we're going to apply some pinline washers to make everything pop just that little bit more. By adding a lot of thinner, we can create a wash, which we could then touch to the recesses of the mini, and the paint will just fill the space, leaving us with some nice definition. There's no exact ratio of thinner to paint here, and you want just enough that it'll flow on its own, but not so much that it'll spill everywhere. As always, test it on the less obvious part of the mini first, and adjust as you need to. If we get any spillover, we can use our blending brush to tap it away. I recommend waiting a good 20 minutes or so before doing this, however, as all that thinner will wipe away more than we want it to if pushed around. I can fudge this a bit with these as the silver paint is so inherently thick and given the time between my first application, but it's always good to be on the safe side, especially if you're new to the method. Same process for the other two. I can again use straight asphaltum here on the bronze model as it'll read much darker in such a confined space, but we can always add more purple or even blue if we wanted to further darken it down. It doesn't take long before our elements really start to pop and a lot of that overspill will evaporate on its own, and not leave that coffee staining effect that's common with acrylic washes. Next we'll apply some final highlights, using a hint of our foundational colour, and then finally some pure silver. Here we're taking a smaller brush and focusing on those sharpest upwards facing edges, and some areas where we might want to add a specular highlight or two, like on the chest plate. I like to add just a tiny bit of foundational colour here, as once these are all done, I'll still be able to use pure silver for the brightest brights and the very tips of things like the blades and the helmet crests. We can also apply some less realistic highlights around the parts that we want to draw attention to, such as the features on the mask. Mini painting is often about finding a balance between what looks correct and what looks good, and I'm a firm believer in the latter. 
by now the silver might be having a hard time sticking. If that's the case, a touch of thinner should help it both flow from the brush more easily and adhere to the model. Thin paint sticks to thick paint and vice versa. So if you're ever having trouble, have a play with your ratios. And here they are all together. The same silver paint and accent colours applied across three different foundations, giving us very distinct metals. If you were doing a unit or army of these, you can get by with just a few different colours on your palette. And learning how your paints behave when mixed can really open a lot of doors for you, particularly if you're on a budget. And here they are a few days later, with the shields on and a few tufts of static grass applied to liven up the bases. I've opted against varnishing these, as varnishes, particularly matte ones, tend to kill the shine in metallic paint. Oil paints tend to be a lot more robust than acrylic once dried, so I'm not too worried about them chipping, but honestly having to apply an occasional touch-up is well worth preserving this neat effect. So let me know what you think in the comments, and if there are any other colours you'd like to see explored with this technique. Indian yellow and I tend to have a bit of a thing, due to how potent it is, but this time I think it worked out, and I'm pretty happy with the results. So thanks very much for your company today. If you had any questions about any of the products or techniques I've talked about, or have a topic you'd like me to cover in a future video, I'd love to hear it. And if you'd like to further support me in this kind of content, consider giving them a Patreon a look, as those folks really help make this possible. Again, thanks very much for being here, and take care.